Good day, guys. Today we're going to be turning our old Lenovo 500e Gen 2 Chromebook into a dedicated Sunshine game streaming server. In a previous video, we did remove write protection and flash custom core boot firmware to it, which should let us boot pretty much any UEFI compatible OS. To keep things simple, I'll be installing Windows Tiny 10 64-bit, since this is a pretty low-end Chromebook and we need all the performance that we can get. If you wanted to do this yourself, I would highly recommend using Windows Tiny 10 over standard, especially on lower-end devices, since it uses a lot less CPU and RAM when idle. I've just written Windows Tiny 10 64-bit to my cheap USB flash drive using Rufus, targeting UEFI, GPT and not MBR. Let's get into it. I've just powered on the Chromebook and press escape to get into the UEFI menu. You can see it does have the Intel Celeron N4120 CPU and only four gig of RAM. Unfortunately, everything is soldered on this Chromebook, so there's no upgrading RAM or hard drive. I'll just plug in the Windows Tiny 10 flash drive, go down to boot menu, and we're just gonna select USB Lexa. Press enter, there's our core boot logo, and we've loaded into the Windows 10 setup. Unfortunately, the trackpad doesn't work, so we'll just use keyboard, pressing tab, press enter on next, press enter on install now, Press spacebar to accept the agreement and press tab and spacebar again to go next. I want to go down to custom. I want to delete all the existing Chrome OS partitions. This is pretty tedious, but basically just pressing tab until we can select a partition and then press tab again, go down to delete, press spacebar and spacebar for OK. And we'll just do that for all the partitions. We also want to delete the EFI system partition since we don't need it. That is all part of Chrome OS. And we've finally removed all the partitions. You can go across to new, but you don't need to. You can just go down to next and it will automatically create a new partition. It seems to be installing now. We'll come back when it's finished. We've almost finished the setup. We're on the final stretch. Still no trackpad. I could use a USB mouse, but we'll continue with the keyboard. Let's press tab, spacebar, tab and spacebar again. Just enter or spacebar. No network drivers it looks like. We'll call it Sunshine. Since this is going to be our Sunshine server, no password. Want to try and turn as much as I can off. So tab and spacebar and enter on accept. And we're finally on the home screen. See if the touch screen works, it does not. Our keyboard works though, which is good and still no trackpad. We'll start by installing some drivers. Just holding the search button on the keyboard and pressing E to open Explorer. Go down to our flash drive, just pressing tab, there we go. And I'll install some drivers. I did get all of these from Coolstar's Windows installation site, which I will link down in the description below. We installed the touchpad driver, and now we do have access to our touchpad, which is good. So that's all Coolstar's drivers installed. We'll go to Device Manager and see what we're missing. And we are missing quite a lot. We do have network drivers though, so we've got Wi-Fi. That's uh, definitely good. Before we connect to the Wi-Fi, I do want to disable Windows Defender and automatic updates just to squeeze a little bit extra performance out of this low-end laptop. We open up Task Manager. We can see our CPU is idling very low, 3% at just under 900 meg but we are using 1.2 gig of RAM. It's usually slightly less than that. So we'll see if it goes down after we've finished installing everything and do a fresh reboot. To disable Windows Update and Windows Defender, just gonna click on Start, type in GP Edit for Group Policy Editor, go full screen, go down to Admin Templates, Windows Components, wanna go down a little bit. So it looks like Windows Defender is already disabled out of the box on this version of Windows Tiny 10, which is good, but we still wanna disable Windows Update. There it is at the bottom, just open it up. And we want to configure automatic updates. Let's double click on it, drag it up a little bit. There we go. Go down to disabled and click apply. Click OK. We can close this off. So that should be automatic updates disabled. From here, I'll connect to the internet, install Google Chrome and the rest of our missing drivers. So I've pretty much installed all of the free drivers. Unfortunately, the audio drivers are paid for this Chromebook and they're around $15 Australian if I remember correctly. So we won't bother installing any audio drivers. We'll see if we do get audio when streaming over Moonlight though. That'll be interesting to see. You'll also notice we've only got just under eight gig free space left on C drive. So I think what I'll do next is I'll try and compress everything to free up a little bit more space. Pressing start, going to command prompt. We want to run it as administrator. Go yes. And we've just typed in compact.exe slash compactOS colon always. Just press enter. So it's finished, that didn't take too long. You can see it looks like it did compress it two to one, which is pretty good. Go back to Explorer, refresh it, and it actually did go down. I'm guessing there are still temporary files, and that is just a coincidence. So I think next we'll close all this off and install Sunshine, which will be our game streaming server. Let's go to Google, typing in Sunshine Game Server. We want to click on the GitHub link. I will directly link this down in the description as well. Let's scroll down. On the right, click on Releases. Go down a little bit, and we want the Sunshine Windows Installer.exe. Let's click on that. When it's finished downloading, we'll run it. 
go next. Pretty standard install. Next, 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 next. It did automatically open up the Sunshine Docks. We'll go back to our setup and it's finished. Let's click finish. On the taskbar, we want to right click on Sunshine, click on Open Sunshine, click on Advanced, go down, click Proceed to Localhost, unsafe. Now we want to create a password, do something simple, click Login, done. It mentions it'll reload, there it is there. The username was Sunshine, yeah, let's put the password in. Cool, so that's Sunshine setup. At the top, we'll click on Applications, I'll click Add New, and we'll start adding our games in. We'll start with OSRS, just RuneLight, scrolling down slightly. We want to fill in the command box. So for this, let's go to desktop, right click on RuneLight, go to properties, and copy the target link there, which is the default one that's highlighted. Go back to Sunshine, paste that in. We'll leave working directory blank. We won't run as admin. Continue streaming if the application exits quickly. Leave everything else as default. Under image, we'll type in RuneLight, click find cover. Didn't find a RuneLight cover, a bit unfortunate. So what we'll do is we'll go to Google, let's type in RuneLight, go to images, and we'll just find something we can use. There we go, that'll do. Save image as, save it to downloads. We'll call it RuneLight folder. We wanna copy the address that it's located, which for me is downloads. So I go back to, go back to sunshine, under image, paste that, slash RuneLight dot, I think it was PNG, uh, JPEG, JPG. And that should do it, click save. We'll repeat the steps for all of our games. So I've added a few games, but I did encounter an issue. Uh, when trying to actually run Turok Remastered, because there's no sound driver, uh, it doesn't actually run. So I think a workaround I'm going to try is I'm going to pair my Bluetooth headphones, which should act as a valid sound device. Let's go to Bluetooth, add a device, Bluetooth, there we go, done. And we do have sound now, obviously only through the headphones, but it does show up. So we'll see if we can run Turok Remastered now. It says initializing, there we go, black screen. And it does work fine. So for the rest of the video, we'll be using our Bluetooth headphones. But another workaround would be to get a cheap USB sound card. They're around a dollar online. And that should also trick it into working. So now we've got all our games installed. Let's move over to our handheld that we'll actually be streaming the games to. We'll be using our R36H to stream to. Just because it doesn't get used much. And since there's no built-in Wi-Fi, I'll just be using my USB wireless adapter through a USB-A to USB-C adapter. Plug it in. My R36H is almost flat, so I will need to charge it. And for that, we'll just use our cheap Bunnings power bank. Also, I've just done a fresh install of the latest version of ArcOS, which at the time of filming is the first multi-panel version. So with our Wi-Fi connected, let's go down to options, go down the bottom to Wi-Fi, connect a new Wi-Fi connection. Didn't find it, it's not a good sign. I did have to change wireless adapter, which is a bit weird, but it should work now, there we go. The other wireless adapter does work on this handheld. Just not too sure why it wasn't working right now. I'll enter my password. It's successfully connected, which is good. Go back and we'll go quit. From here, I want to install Portmaster. So we'll go up to tools and run Portmaster. It's the first time we're running it. So I click yes to install, click okay. Open it up again. We've got to update, so press A. And it's finished updating, press A again. Press A to accept the disclaimer. And we're finally in Portmaster. Go down to all ports. We want to go all the way down to Moonlight New, which is the client we'll actually be using to stream from our Sunshine server. Let's press A and press A to install. Press A again, press B to go back, and we'll go down to exit. Now if we go down to ports, we should have our Moonlight. Let's press A to open it. Perfect. We'll go over to connect. We want to go pair. We want to go across to IP address. Now we have to enter our server's IP. Back in our Chromebook server now. There's a few ways to find your IP, but probably the easiest is just to open command. So let's go start, type in CMD, and just type in IP config. Should be under Wi-Fi, and it's 192.168.1.157, just next to IPv4 address. So we need to remember 157, we'll go back to our R36H, and we'll just go back, 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 1.157, go to done, go to pair. Now it's given us a pin to enter on our server, 6608. So we'll go back over to that, close off command prompt. At the top, click on pin. And it was 6608 under device name. We'll just call it R36H and go send. And that's all we should have to do on our server. We can close the lid again. It is still running in the background. Back on R36H, it does say successfully paired, which is good. If we go to play now, you'll see there's no apps loaded. So we want to go back to connect and go reload apps. There we go. We got Turok, Plants vs Zombies, Old School RuneScape, and the two default ones, Steam Big Picture and Desktop. Press B, go to play. And here's all our games.
Just to make sure everything works, we'll try old school RuneScape. So there's our Windows desktop. It is loading RuneLight, which is a good sign. And it did load. So RuneLight did load, but unfortunately, it does require a mouse. And out of the box, Sunshine emulates a gamepad. Thankfully, there are programs we can install on our game server that will convert our gamepad into a mouse or keyboard. So we'll exit out of Moonlight for now, just start and select. And we'll move back over to our Sunshine game server. So we're back on our Sunshine game server now. And the main tool people usually use to remap their gamepad to a mouse or keyboard is Joyta Key. But unfortunately, it isn't free. You do need a license, but there is a shareware version that gives you a trial. There is a very similar program, which I haven't tried before, Antimarco X. It is uh, free and open source over on GitHub. It claims to do pretty much the same thing. So I think we will try download and install this one instead. Go to releases, go down. And there is a portable version, but I think we'll download the full installer. So Windows AMD 64. When it's finished downloading, we'll run it. Next, I agree. We'll keep it as default, let's go next. Go next again, next again, and finish. We'll open it up, there it is, Antimarco X. It says no joysticks have been found. So on the R36H, I'll open up Moonlight once more and we'll go to OSRS. That should be loading any second now. There we go. So Runelight's finished loading. We'll mute the sound. It still hasn't detected it. We'll just go to start and type in gamepad, set up USB game controllers. So it hasn't actually started the gamepad driver. So the gamepad's detected now. All I did was close Moonlight on the R36H and reopen it. The joystick isn't detected until you press a button on the actual R36H itself. So I didn't actually have to close and reopen Moonlight. Go to our USB game controller. It did show up. We'll go back to Antimicro X and it did show up as well. So let's start mapping. Under left stick, we'll click up and I want to change it to mouse up. There we go. Should be able to click close. That worked. Do the same thing for down. Back to mouse. Mouse down and close. Our left joystick on the R36H, hopefully it does move the mouse. You can see it does, that's brilliant. We'll leave the D-pad for now, and we want A to be left click. So we'll go to mouse, left click, click close, and we'll do B as right click. So mouse and right button, click close. I think we'll map the right joystick to the arrow keys so we can change the angle. So keyboard, we want up, we want down to down, click save, we'll call it R36H mouse. Nice and easy. We'll log into OSRS and see if it actually works. So it's logged in and our mappings did work. The right joystick moves the camera, left joystick moves the mouse. A should be left click and it is. And B should right click and it does. There is a fair bit of latency though. So you wouldn't want to boss on this, but perfect for AFKing in bed. Yeah, that works fine. So we've got our Sunshine game streaming server pretty much set up, at least the basics. What about power consumption? Since as we all know, it isn't free. The battery in the Chromebook is fully charged. So all we're seeing is the actual power consumption of the Chromebook itself. I've got a simple kilowatt meter. We can see here it's drawing around nine watts at idle. The Chromebook battery is fully charged. So this power consumption is just the device itself. The server is running, but it's currently not streaming anything. I think it's safe to say it is idling around 9 watts. So what we'll do is we'll bring our R36H over and we'll start streaming and see what it ramps up to. So it's ramped up to 16 watts, 12 watts. It is loading rune light. 17, that's the highest we've seen so far. So it's finished loading. It has ramped back down slightly, 13 watts. I'll log into OSRS so we can get a more accurate reading. So now we're actually logged into OSRS. Let's take a look at the power readings. So we're at 15 watts, 14, 15. It's not too bad. I'd say around 15 or 16 watts while actually playing is a fair approximation. If we punch the numbers into a calculator, we can see it costs us around 8 cents a day to keep our Sunshine game streaming server running at idle. So that's with no clients connected, but the server running and obviously the screen off, which works out to be around $27.60 per year. While under load playing OSRS, it averaged around 15 watts, which again at 35 cents a kilowatt hour is around 13 cents a day or $46 a year. You're obviously not going to be streaming from it 24 seven. So it's probably closer to around $35 a year on average. That's not too bad at all. Overall, it was a fun little project for this old Chromebook, which was just sitting around doing nothing. And although I don't think you should go out and buy a Chromebook specifically for this, if you do have an old Chromebook or laptop laying around, this might be something worth looking into. I think that'll do it for today. 
you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.